Greetings everyone, this is Cheryl and we are day 17 of our 31 day encouragement challenge and we are still in the book of Ruth. Today we are going to be looking at chapter 4, Boaz marries Ruth and I'm going to read chapter 4 and give you a quick description of it. So Boaz went to the town gate and took a seat there. Just then, the family redeemer he had mentioned came by. So Boaz called out to him, Come over here and sit down, friend. I want to talk to you. So they sat down together. Then Boaz called ten leaders from the town and asked them to sit as witnesses. And Boaz said to the family redeemer, You know Naomi, who came back from Moab? She is selling the land that belonged to our relative, Emelech. I thought I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it if you wish. If you want the land, then buy it here in the presence of these witnesses. But if you don't want it, let me know right away because I am next in line to redeem it after you. The man replied, all right, I'll redeem it. Then Boaz told him, of course, your purchase of the land from Naomi also requires that you marry Ruth, the Moabite widow. That way, she can have children who will carry on her husband's name and keep the land in the family. Then I can't redeem it, the family redeemer replied, because this might endanger my own estate. You redeem the land. I cannot do it. Now in those days, it was the custom in Israel for anyone transferring a right of purchase to remove his sandal and hand it to the other party. This publicly validated the transaction. So the other family redeemer drew off his sandal as he said to Boaz, you buy the land. Then when Boaz said to the elders and to the crowd standing around, you are witnesses that today I have bought from Naomi all the proper of Emily, Killian, and Malin. And with the land, I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Malin, to be my wife. This way, she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You are all witnesses today. Then the elders and all the people standing in the gate replied, We are witnesses. May the Lord make this woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, from whom all the nation of Israel descended. May you prosper in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. And may the Lord give you descendants by this young woman who will be like those of our ancestor Perez, the son of Tamar and Judah. So Boaz took Ruth into his home and she became his wife. When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant, and she gave birth to a son. Then the women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord, who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age. For he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. Naomi took the baby and cuddled him to her breast, and she cared for him as if he were her own. The neighbor women said, Now, at last, Naomi has a son again, and they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. This is the genealogical record of their ancestor Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Menadab. Menadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. And that is chapter four, the last chapter of the book of Ruth. So the title of chapter four is God's ending. And so we saw that chapter four opens up to Boaz at the gate in the center, center of the town. And he is here because he would like to marry Ruth and he is looking for the king's male redeemer. 
Now, the Kingsman Redeemer, um, in, in that sense, was the closest relative to the family, or to Ruth and Naomi. And it's a man that we don't know, but however, we learn quite a bit from his character just in that sh uh, short passage. We know that this man is obligated to take care of the two women, but not once has he stepped up to offer any help. Beyond that, when Boaz asked the man if he would like to redeem Ruth, he declines to do so. This was a man who like first, number one, integrity and character, especially in comparison to Boaz. Now, Boaz makes a legal transaction there in the town square with the relative to have redeeming rights to Ruth so that he can marry her. He had no legal obligation to do anything for Ruth, but however, he has done nothing but care for her throughout the entire book. And Boaz has extended grace just as Jesus extends grace to us. Now, when we look at it, God's grace is sufficient for us. We have been redeemed by Jesus Christ. Foreigners who deserve nothing but have been given the rights of an heir. Now, as Jesus redeems his bride, who is the church, Boaz redeems his bride, who is Ruth. He marries her and she conceives. Now, this is interesting because Ruth wasn't able to conceive before, but in the previous 10 years. But now we saw that the Lord blessed her, whereas she wasn't barren any longer. Now, God had opened up her womb at this time in order for her to give birth. Now, she does so to a little boy named Obed, who becomes the grandfather of great King David. Now, I want to paint one more picture of God's grace and sovereignty through the birth of this child. Now, Ruth was a Moabite, and we know that a Moabite was a foreigner who had no legal rights, really no rights. However, through God's grace and redemption, she becomes part of the gene genealogical, uh, oh, excuse me, the ge gene genealogy, genealogy of Christ. And how incredible of a story is that? Now, it wasn't an easy life for Ruth. She grew up in a wicked nation, and we learned about that. She suffered the loss of her husband. She followed Naomi to a foreign land and lived in poverty. All very difficult circumstances. However, as I pointed out in the beginning of the series, we can see God's fingerprints all over Ruth's story. And there is no doubt he was at work the entire time. It was a long and difficult journey, but it ended with redemption. Ruth started out empty, but she ended up full. And let me just say, no matter what your season may be, remember that God is still at work in your life. He is weaving a beautiful tapestry. It's not finished, but it is in progress. Know that God is gracious, he is good, and that he loves you. If you find yourself discouraged on your journey, take another look at the book of Ruth, at her life, and remember that God works for the good of his people. And I pray that you have been blessed and we're still not finished with the book of Ruth because tomorrow I'm going to go into From Barrenness to Bless and then we are going to finish it up with how Ruth is seen as a Proverbs 31 woman and what exactly is a Proverbs 31 woman. So we have two more days in the book of Ruth and we will be finished. So I pray that this has been a blessing to you and that you are gaining more insight and revelation into the book of Ruth because it's more it's more to it than just Ruth meeting Boaz and they getting married and and now she has entered into this land of wealth. But it's more so about your standing with Christ. So Journey along with me for a couple more days in the book of Ruth before we transition to another character. I pray that you're having an awesome day and be blessed and I'll see you tomorrow.